Hi guys and welcome to another Watch Geek video. Today we're doing the second part of the tutorial for the Mudmaster GGB100. In this part we're gonna cover the sensor functions, while I already did the part 1 where I covered all the basic functions. Now just like in all my other tutorial videos, in the description you will find a table of content with time codes so you can jump to specific parts of the video or functions of the watch. However, I would advise you to watch the whole video the first time, just so you get acquainted with all the functions that this watch offers. So the first thing that we're going to cover is the compass function. Now to activate the compass you have to be in the home screen and then you simply press the comp button. Once you do, the watch is going to measure the direction for, the, for 60 seconds and whenever you want to restart that cycle of 60 seconds you simply press the comp button again. Now, while in the compass mode, the seconds hand is always going to point to north, while uh, the screen here is going to display where you're pointing the watch or where you're pointing the 12 o'clock marker. Now, it can either display the sides of the world like this, or if you press the adjust button, you can toggle it to display the bearing in degrees. And as you can see, as I'm turning the, the compass, the bearing changes and also the position of the seconds hand changes. Like I said, to restart the 60 second cycle you simply press the comp button. And that's it. Another thing that you can do in the compass is calibrate it. Now to calibrate it you simply press and hold the adjust button, but this is something you will probably never have to do because this is one of the rear watches that does the calibration automatically as you wear it. So as long as you're wearing it on your wrist and walking the watch is gonna uh, calibrate itself I believe every 12 hours or, or once in 24 hours. But you can also do the manual calibration by simply pressing and holding the adjust button in there. And now the watch is going to ask you for the uh, figure 8 calibration and I'm going to put a picture of how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to put it on your wrist and just wave your hand, your wrist in a figure 8 uh, uh, pattern. I'll put a picture so you'll see. There is a simpler way of calibrating and it's used by pressing the mode button and it's called the two-point calibration. To do so all you have to do is put the watch a level and it doesn't have to point to north or any side of the world. You simply put a level and press the comp button. Once the watch does the calibration it's gonna tell you turn 180 degrees. Now you have to turn the watch 180 degrees while keeping it level and you press the comp button again until the watch writes OK. And that's it, you just completed the calibration. Another thing that you can do in the compass uh, setting is set the declination. Declination is the difference in degrees between true north and magnetic north. So if by any chance you're using a map that says uh, a true north and it has a, a magnetic declination written on it so you know what the magnetic declination for that map is, you can input it into the watch to get a more accurate reading of your bearing. To do so you again enter the, 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 the calibration mode by pressing and holding the adjust button and keep pressing the mode button until you get to the declination screen, like so. Once in the declination screen with these two buttons you can set the declination in degrees due east and due west in one degree increments. So you want to put it as close as possible to the figure written on the map. If the map doesn't have the magnetic declination written on it, it means that you just leave it at zero and you're gonna be okay. Press the adjust button and the watch is going to exit the adjusting screen. Now, another thing that you can do in the compass is when you use the app and it it's actually the watch is going to show you the distance and also the bearing to your destination that you set up in the app. That is what this screen right here is, not this screen but this display or whatever you want to call it. So once you set a waypoint in the map, on, on the map in the app and connect the watch, while in the compass you can tell the watch to take you there. And it's actually gonna write the distance here and this needle, the seconds hand, is actually gonna take you, navigate you to your destination. However, I find that function a bit unnecessary because it's gonna drain the battery on your phone and if you're gonna use your phone to navigate why use the watch as well? You can simply take the phone out and then use the phone. But I just wanted to tell you that this watch does have that option. Okay, so that's it when it comes to the compass. Let's cover the next function. The next function is the altimeter. Again, to enter the altimeter while in the home screen and as you can see the watch automatically jumped back to the home screen after one full minute of not pressing the comp button. 
So to enter the altimeter, you simply press the ALTI button. And now the watch is going to keep measuring the altitude every second for the first three minutes. After that, it's going to start measuring in one of two possible intervals. Now, these interval intervals are selectable in the adjusting screen. and I'm going to show you show that to you in a minute. The two intervals are either one uh, where you measure where the watch measures every two minutes for the next 12 hours or it measures every five seconds for the next hour. But we're going to show you that. Again, just like with the compass, you restart the three minute cycle whenever you press the ALT button. And as you can see, while in the altimeter mode, the watch is going to show you the current altitude. It's going to show you graphically the altitude changes. And this here, the seconds hand, is actually going to show you the difference between your altitude and your reference altitude that you put in memory. What that means is that this needle can actually show you as you're ascending and descending how you change your altitude based on your reference altitude. Now to set up the reference altitude all you have to do is press and hold the light button for two seconds and the watch is gonna remember this altitude right here as our reference altitude. And as you can see the seconds hand just jumped to zero because we're currently at an altitude that's the same as the reference one. Now while in the altimeter uh, the display here, like I said, displays the altitude and this, but you can change it by pressing the adjust button to any other. This one is just gonna display the difference in altitude like this, and this one goes back to the altitude and the graphical display. Since the altimeter actually uses the barometric data to display or calculate the altitude, it's going to change over time even if you're in the same altitude. Because as the weather and barometric pressure change, so does the altitude. Because of this, you're supposed to calibrate the altimeter as often as possible. So this is a pretty accurate altimeter when it comes to changes in elevation. But the starting altitude changes over the course of the day. So to calibrate it, you have to press and hold the altimeter, the adjust button. And now the watch simply asks you for the current altitude. Now you're supposed to do this whenever you're starting a hike. From a known altitude, you input this. Also, as you're hiking or, or uh, tracking, whenever you come to a waypoint where you know the altitude based on map data or a table that says that the current altitude is this, you're supposed to get into this altimeter adjusting mode and adjust the altitude uh, to the correct one. Now I'm going to ch ch change it just so that we can see what the seconds hand does. So let's move it to like this. Now once you've set, uh, set the, re uh, the current altitude, so you recalibrated the altimeter, you simply exit and the watch is going to keep measuring accurately. Now like I said, this watch can, you can also change the interval of the measurements and you can also change the how do you say this, the resolution of the, of, or the scale of what the seconds hand shows. So I'm going to show you what I mean. Press and hold the adjust button. Once you enter the calibration mode, press the mode button. And now the watch is going to ask you for the interval that I mentioned. This is now set for the two minute interval for the next uh, 12 hours. To toggle it with the lower button, you can change it to a five second interval for the next hour like so. Now, when it comes to the uh, resolution of this or the scale of this, you simply press the mode button again and the watch is going to ask you whether you want this differential to be in a hundred of meters or a thousand meter. What that means is that if you look closely, you will see that there are numbers here going from one all the way to nine, ten and over. And under here, you have minus one, minus two, all the way to minus ten and under. So if we select the, the differential like this to be 100 meters, it means that each one of these is 10 meters reaching all the way to minus 100 or plus 100. So if I leave it like this at 100 and exit the adjusting, you're gonna see that now it's at 1 because we moved by, by 10 meters from our reference altitude. So we're now at 145 which is 10 meters more than 135 that we set up as our reference altitude. Now if I change the resolution to a thousand meters by pressing the lower button, 
Now the second hand should stay at zero because now each, and it did, as you can see, because each one of these numbers is a hundred meters reaching all the way to a thousand meters and to a minus thousand meters. So now, since we only climbed 10 meters, it's not gonna move any, anywhere because this here is a hundred meters. So if you want a more accurate reading or if you want the second hand to measure or to show you every 10 meters, you're just gonna select the in, not the interval, but you're going to select the resolution of 100 meters. And that's pretty much it. Now, if you don't want the second hand to show you the difference between a reference altitude and what, when you're climbing, if you just want it to, if you just want to use it as a regular second hand because you want as accurate as possible reading of the time, you can also do that by going again into the calibration mode. And once in the calibration mode, you keep pressing the mode button until the watch writes hand. And now, as you can see, the hand is set, the second hand is set to show you the difference between, like I said, your reference altitude and the current altitude. By pressing the lower button, you can select seconds. And now when we exit via the adjusting screen, as you can see, the second hand now acts as a normal second hand. So this is if you're not really interested, like I said, in the, in the difference between the altitude, but you want as accurate time reading as possible. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the altimeter. Now, there is a, another thing that's connected to the record screen that we're going to show you right after this. Now, in the altimeter, whenever you do uh, an ascend or descend, or should I say, whenever you enter the altimeter, it's going to memorize certain things. It's going to memorize and store in memory your maximum altitude that you've ever been to with the date and time when you were, your minimum altitude whenever with the date and time when you were there, it's gonna store your cumulative ascent and your cumulative descent. Now the ascent and descent are gonna be stored only if you reach at least 15 meters of difference between elevations when you're in the measuring mode. So once in the altimeter, if you're tracking and if your elevation changes are under 15 meters, it's not gonna store it in memory. If, however, they exceed 15 meters, it's gonna store them in memory and keep adding them up until you clear them. You can also store, I mean store, you can manually store the current altitude that you're at with the timestamp of when you're here, with the date and, and time, by pressing and holding the altimeter button for more than two seconds, like so. And now, as you can see, the watch just recorded this in the rec screen, which is something we're gonna show you right after the altimeter. So, let's move on to the rec screen. Okay, so in the rec screen, the watch is gonna show you the manual stamps, timestamps that you did, and as you can see, I just did this one, so it's number one. It can store up to 14, and when you, once you exceed those 14, it's gonna start overwriting the oldest ones. Since we only have one, and you cycle through the values through these manual and those automatically stored data by using these two buttons. Since we have only one manual, it's automatically going to jump after that to the mix maximum, minimum, ascent and descent. So let's use the lower button. As you can see, we have the maximum and now the watch is going to cycle through the data. So as you can see, the maximum was 243 meters at 1723 and it wrote the dates when we just started. And by pressing this, you can actually repeat the process so you can see the date, time, and year by simply pressing this. Okay, let's see our minimum. Our minimum was 71119 at 118 meters at 1051. Again, pressing it is gonna repeat the cycle so you can see the date. Let's move on. Ascent is zero because we never exceeded more than 15 meters. Descent also never exceeded 15 meters, so it's zero. Now you can delete any of these entries or you can delete them all. To delete a single entry, you selected, let's say our manual entry number one, and press and hold the adjust button until you clear it, like so. If you want to clear the whole memory, the maximum, the minimum, the ascent, the descent, and all the manual inputs, you simply select any one of these and press and hold, but ignore the first clear and hold until it says all clear. So let's do it. Press and hold, still hold, and there. Now the watch has cleared the whole memory. So maximum doesn't exist, minimum doesn't exist, and manuals doesn't exist. 
And that's it. So this is when it comes to the rec screen. So let's move on. Okay, so the next function is the barometer. To enter the barometer, you simply use the mode button until you reach it. Once in the barometer, the watch is going to keep measuring the pressure every 5 seconds for the first 3 minutes. After that, it's either going to measure for every 2 minutes uh, for the next hour or 5 seconds for the next hour, depending on what interval you select. This interval also determines what this display is going to display. So currently, we have a 2 minute interval uh, selected. Because of this, this actually shows the last 20 hours. These, this graphical interface right here and over here naturally you have the visible uh, the visible pressure. Now if you want to expand this uh, expand this and see an even bigger uh, bigger graph you simply press the adjust button and it's gonna show you the last I believe 40 hours and to toggle it back you simply press this. Now if you select a 5 second interval which is something you toggle by pressing and holding the comp button while in the barometer. So press and hold and we just switched to a 5 second interval. Now this is going to display the next uh, 20, I mean the last 20 minutes. So it's, in my opinion, it's better to leave it like this, to put it on to a 2 minute interval, because that gives you a better uh, view of what's happening with the pressure, because you see the last 20 hours. Now, all these intervals, the 5 second and the 2, sec uh, and the two minute interval, lasts for uh, 1 hour after which the watch will stop measuring. However, this watch keeps measuring the pressure even when you're in the home screen, or no matter what other screen you are, it constantly measures the pressure every 2 hours. That is why in the home screen you have the ability to see the pressure data by pressing, by toggling it until you see it here. So this as you can see, you can see the last 20 hours and uh, the display displayed here is going to depend on the interval you selected there. So if in the barometer you select the uh, 5 second interval that shows you the last 20 minutes, the last 20 minutes are going to be shown here graphically. If you select a 2 minute interval that uh, uh, displays the last 20 hours, last 20 hours are going to be visible here. So like I said, the watch keeps measuring the pressure every 2 hours. However, you can also in, uh, turn on a weather alarm. So go into the barometer and now press and hold the lower button until you have the info on written, like so. Now you've turned on the weather alarm. What that means is that even when you're in the home screen, the watch is going to keep measuring the pressure every 2 minutes, but it's going to last only for 24 hours, after that it's going to turn it off. However, in those 24 hours, if it detects a sudden drop in pressure or a sudden rise in pressure, it's actually going to beep to warn you and it's going to display one of the four possible symbols right here. And I'm going to put a picture on the screen somewhere so you can see what these symbols mean. But this is so why I find barometer to be one of the best functions you can have on a watch, because it can actually help you predict an oncoming bad weather. Now, like I said, even if you don't have the weather alarm turned on, just by looking at this 20, 20 hour graph, you can pretty much see that the weather is going bad. If you see a downwards uh, tendency, the weather is going bad. If you see an upwards, the weather is going to get better. As you can see, there's rain coming here, definitely. Okay, let's go back to the barometer. Now in the barometer, the seconds hand is going to show you the difference between the last two measurements. So the current measurement versus the last one it did. And also, it uses the same scale that the altimeter uses. So 1 to plus 10 and over, and minus 1 to minus 10 and under. However, the resolution of the reading depends on the interval you selected. With this interval, each one of these is 1 hectopascal. However, if we switch to another interval, the one where we see the 5 second interval where we see last 20 minutes, each one of these is going to be 10 hectopascal. So we can see that the seconds hand has actually jumped to zero, like so. Let's go back to that other display, like so. Okay, now the last thing that you can do in the barometer is naturally calibrated just like all the others and you can also tell the seconds hand to act as a regular seconds hand just like you could in the compass or in the altimeter, sorry. Okay, so to calibrate the barometer all you have to do is press and hold the adjust button 
And now if you have a known barometer that's more precise than this, you can correct the value if this is incorrect by using these two buttons, like so. Pressing the mode button, the watch is going to ask you whether you want the hand to display the difference between the last two measurements or just like in the altimeter, if you want it, if you want to use it as a regular seconds hand. So if we selected this and exit the adjusting, the seconds hand is just going to tick. And that's pretty much it when it comes to barometer. Let's move on. The next function is the thermometer. So pressing the mode button until you reach the thermometer and temperature, the watch is gonna tell you the reading in, in centigrade because I selected that and I showed you in part one where to change the units. Now, another thing that you can do in the thermometer is calibrated just like in all others and that's pretty much the only thing you can do in the thermometer. So press and hold and now you can change the reference uh, value if the thermometer is not accurate. Another thing that you have to know about the thermometer is that in order to get an accurate reading, you're supposed to take the watch off and leave it at least 10 or 15 minutes off your wrist because otherwise the heat from your wrist is actually gonna influence the reading right here. As you can see, it says it's 29.5 and it's nowhere clear, nowhere near 29.5. It's probably like 20 or 22 degrees in this room but because I'm holding it in my hands, my heat, the heat from my hands is actually influencing the reading. So it, like I said, if you want an accurate reading, you're supposed to leave it off your wrist for at least 10 or 15 minutes. Anyways, that's it when it comes to the thermometer. So the last function that we're going to cover is the sunrise and sunset data. So press uh, the mode button until we reach there, sunrise. This is today's date. The sun rose at 7.48, it will set at 1720. And now the watch is going to keep cycling between the two datas. This is a pretty useful function when I used to ride my bike. Bicycle, I, wouldn't, I would always have to look up on my phone when the sun is going to set so I don't get caught by the dark. You can also plan with this ahead because you can move by these two buttons through different dates. So let's say we can go forwards if we plan on hiking on the 15th of November of 2019, the watch is going to tell us when the sun is going to rise and when the sun is going to set for that exact date. So you can move as forward as you want and it's always going to correct, which is a pretty useful function. Well, that's it. Let's press until we go back to the home screen. And that's pretty much it when it comes to these advanced or sensor functions. Now, there is another function that's again connected with the app and that's the log function where the watch can store the current uh, not just altitude but you know your waypoints as you're moving but like I said they're used on the using the the app and I don't want to explain that because that's pretty self-explanatory once you're in the app this is why I covered only watch only functions in case you're not using your phone anyways that's it so please do check out the part one where I cover all the basic functions I really do hope some of you find this useful and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like and subscribe. And until the next video, bye.